Well, a new twist to update you on when it comes to the Occupy Wall Street movement that's happening more and more. Uh, here's a look, though, at the Federal Reserve Building in Washington, D.C. It looks empty now, but a rally is expected to happen soon. This one is called Occupy the Federal Reserve. Meantime, uh, new Wall Street demonstrations are popping up daily. These are pictures of what's going on in Portland, Oregon, Trenton, New Jersey, Philadelphia, and Tampa, Florida. Whether Republican or Democrat, there's a lot of common interests that everybody has with the direction that the country's going in. And um, as the other side of this sign says, enough's enough. We're not trying to overthrow the Constitution. We're just trying to express ourselves and say, hey, America is about all of us. Protests are scheduled for today in Atlanta, Minneapolis, San Diego, even the Federal Reserve, as I said, in Washington. I want to bring in our panel of guests on this. We have Matt Britton. He is the CEO and founder of Mr. Youth. Victoria Perel is a student at Northeastern involved in the Occupy Boston movement. And Lauren Welker is the spokeswoman for the Occupy Austin movement. So good morning to all of our guests. Lauren, I want to start with you. Uh, let's begin with your thoughts and what you think protesters and the Tea Party might have more in common than some may have first given recognition to. Right. Um, so really, this is all about getting people involved in the democratic process. Americans have been asleep for the last 30 years and apathetic towards their government. And look what's happened. Um, there's a lot of focus on the financial corruption of our government and how that influences their decision and policy making. Uh, Matt, the basics of this, a lot of people would look at it as a liberal movement. However, as we're hearing from people commenting about this, they're not worried about whether it's right or left. They're worried about what this government is doing, what democracy really stands for, and how do we get greed out of Washington, D.C. Uh, when you think and look back at, at what's taking place and how this is growing around the country right now, do you think that the, the message is working? Well, I mean, it, it's in the eye of the beholder. You know, people are, are going out and, and they're they're raising their voice loud and they're and they're spreading their voices on social media to try to be heard. You know, whether or not it works within the government, I think, is a different story. To what they look at it as a way that they're expressing themselves with their peers and and the people who they think are listening to them. Are protesters angry though with President Obama? Is that I, where it falls? Yeah, I, I think protesters are certainly angry with the economy. They're angry with the culture of this country, and and young people are especially angry about the future that's laid about before. Them. Republican presidential candidate Herman Cain has said that if the protesters are poor, they have no one to blame but themselves. And he clarified that position last night with Lawrence O'Donnell. Take a listen to this. My comment was directed at the people who were choosing to demonstrate against those on Wall Street rather than demonstrate against the White House, which is responsible for any effective policy that will impact this economy. That's where they ought to be demonstrating, and that was where my comment was directed. Not Mr. at Katie. the people who are unemployed for no reason of their own. Victoria, I want to bring you into the conversation and ask your thoughts about hearing Herman Cain make a statement like that. Do you think uh, that these type of demonstrations need to move from Wall Street and directly to the White House itself? No, I don't think that the Wall Street, that the White House itself is to blame for the entire economy's problems right now. I think fiscal policy is a tool that can be used to help in some of these issues. But ultimately, if we believe in a free market system, it's not the White House directing things right now. Lauren, where does this ultimately go? This is going to go um, until our elected officials recognize that the people are the supreme authority in this country. It's we the people of the United States of America, not we the corporations. Matt, what are young people saying about their experiences within this economy? Well, I mean, it's funny. There's a, actually a new movement going on right now called Occupy College that is, is a relatively recent phenomenon where this is actually starting to spread to students who have much more of, a, I think, a clear vision of what they think they're protesting against. Um, they feel that, you know, they're entering a world where two-thirds of them have student loans. It's an unclear jobs um, economy out there, and they're really worried about their future. And I think unlike the Occupy Wall Street movement, which is sort of all over the map and in terms of what it's about, they have a clear vision of what they want to change for their future. Uh, Victoria, you can speak to that as being a student at Northeastern. I have to give full disclosure, that is my grandfather's uh, alma mater. Uh, but what is the, the tone there for the students that you're involved with? Well, a group of us who have been involved with the Occupy Boston movement came together on Monday when this Occupy Colleges uh, movement began. And we had about 36 hours because on Wednesday there was a national student walkout. 
in those 36 hours, we mobilized more than 100 Northeastern students to walk out of their classes in solidarity with the Occupy movement. We had about 200 march with us from our campus to the downtown Boston Occupy site. I think that really shows that young people want to be involved, students especially are tuned into these issues, and that we really want to have a voice in this movement. Certainly people taking notice of unified voices, that's for sure. Matt Britton, CEO and founder of Mr. Youth, Victoria Perel from Occupy Boston, and Lauren Welker from the Occupy Austin movement. Thanks to all of you.